Welcome back everyone to Formula E Weekly, the weekly news show rounding up all of the big stories and big drama in the world of Formula E. The second time this show has been on the channel and let's get right into the big gossip which was the Marrakesh E Prix, a full race review is up on the channel but spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert the race was won by Felix Rosenfist, his second of the season, his third in his career, and puts him on top of the standings in front of Sam Bird and John Agbird, who those three really look like now they're going to run away with this championship. Not really much else to report from that race, except it was another non-finish, no points scored once again for reigning world champion Lucas de Grassi. He really needs to start kicking on now if he wants to retain that world championship, which is looking less and less likely every weekend the season kicks on. But in terms of new stories, there is two main stories I have for you this week. The same as last week, two stories. And the first one was the midweek announcement of the new title for the championship. The now newly named ABB Formula E World Championship is designed between the technology and robotics group ABB and Formula E merging as a partnership to help progress Formula E quicker than ever before. The naming deal, so ABB signed a partnership naming deal which obviously changed the name of the sport, cost 74 million for the company but they have decided it's a great investment as they really plan on helping Formula E become the pinnacle of motorsport however I'm not too sure that will be the case for some time so that's that main story out the way then nothing too huge however it's very gone very subtly gone under the radar there's no been a big announcement as such on the program leading up to the Marrakesh E3 and even on their website there was a tiny story about it but nothing major despite all the advertising and everything changing to be now called the ABB Formula E World Championship runs off the tongue quite well. <laughs> I don't know what you think. I think it's I think it's got a, quite a nice little ring to it. But whatever you feel, put your comments down in below. I might even do a little questionnaire sort of thing on the i card in the top right. If I've managed to get it working, what do you reckon? Do you reckon it's a good little ring or not at all? Put your answer in the questionnaire above. Now let's move on to the second juicy story of the week which came out today happened today was the rookie test taking part in Marrakesh a rookie in Formula E is someone who does not currently hold an E license and unlike Formula 1 where the rookies are 20 years of age or younger this event attracted drivers such as Paul De Resta who's in his mid 30s now so that sort of gives you the target audience of this test However, I would argue that Duresta was the most notable name on the list and it was Duresta indeed who finished on top in the first day of testing in the Jaguar, completing 21 laps. And Paul Duresta, I can see him moving to Formula E. I think this is the next step in his career. Obviously, he didn't get this Williams drive or has not yet been confirmed that he's not got it, but we pretty much know he's not got this Williams drive. And so I think a move to Formula E would be very impressive, I think. PK has been quite disruptive since he's coming to Jaguar. Though this weekend he was much, much better than he was in Hong Kong. Mitch Evans, I think, is a great driver. Obviously, this weekend as well, having his own issues with the safety car, or not safety car, full course yellow, I should say, causing him a lot of difficulties as he's already made his stop. So, the rest are not really a space at Jaguar, but we've got the likes of Nissan who already have their driver lineup confirmed. Thank you to Scandinavian who commented on the previous Formula E Weekly giving me that little snippet of juicy goss. So Mercedes, they haven't announced any drivers as far as I'm aware. So the rest of could switch over to Mercedes. Obviously Williams F1 being linked with the Mercedes team. So perhaps, although I do see the Formula E Mercedes team being a perfect place for Pascal Verlein to go, I think that is a very suitable option for himself. So after the Resta, there was quite a few other noticeable names 
in the test, but it was James Rossiter in the Tachita. He was only nine thousandths of a second behind De Resta, which is actually very impressive from Rossiter. Third place, Joel Eriksson, was two temps behind De Resta, all completing similar lap times, but Rossiter out of the three completing the least with only 19 laps completed. Antonio Giovinazzi, the Formula One driver for Sauber, the Ferrari young driver was in fifth. He was four tenths behind De Resta, he was racing for Virgin. Pietro Fittipaldi, also racing for Jaguar, was in sixth. And Alexander Albon was seventh for the Renault Edams team. Uh, the other notable name on the rookie test was Nick De Vries, the McLaren young driver. Didn't impress too much in his first season of Formula 2, although generally, as a rule, drivers seem to do better in their second season of Formula 2, so we'll see what happens there. Obviously, testing this weekend, but he only did two laps that were classified, and they were both outlaps, with none of them counting on the timing sheets, which means he did not put down a time in the session with P20 and the team have decided to come out with the comment that it was due to technical issues. Fantastically generic. There, I do love that from them. Just before I forget as well, I nearly, uh, nearly forgot about this little news story, but it was also discussed and discovered why Daniel Apt was disqualified from the Hong Kong second race. And it turns out that one of the bolts used on his car, I can't quite remember the technical name, which is very, very poor research from myself. <laughs> but one of the names, one of the parts, was incorrect. So what they have to do when they show up to an EPRI, they have to write down in the admissions what part, what specific parts they're going to put on the car with the correct serial number. So this particular bolt, the team had said part, let's say for example, A1, was going to be running on the car. But it turns out that in the race they used the part D1. And although it was exactly the same part, made no advantage to the driver, to the car, because in the post-race scrutineering, the FIA looked and it was not the correct part fitted, the not correct admissions, they had to disqualify the car. And that's such an awful mistake for Audi to make. Daniel Lapp must have been absolutely fuming. I'm a bit fuming for him, to be fair, because that's such a rookie mistake. And we're in season four now of Formula E, and the reigning world champions are getting such a stupid administrative error. It, it's just ridiculous, to be quite honest with you. Really disappointing from them. The next race is in three weeks time, in Chile on the 3rd of February so make sure you're sticking around on this channel for all the latest news on Formula 1 and Formula E so why don't you drop a subscribe it's very much appreciated the support on the channel at the moment once again is absolutely booming so I'm loving this from you guys at the moment but as always remember to like subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one